at all times. People watched looking up and were surprised at the countless small lights scattered across the entire breadth of the blue, bottomless sky. Some guessed that these lights were similar to our sun, only they are much further from us. But no one knew for sure whether our solar system was somehow special. Do other stars have planets? How many of these planets? Are these planets similar to our Earth? Or are they very different from it? In March 2022, humanity passed an important milestone in its knowledge of the universe and has already more than 5,000 exoplanets found. Whoa. In this video, you will find out what discoveries the exoplanets found, brought to scientists, and how exactly they've managed to do it. Watch to the end, it will be burning interesting, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Here, you will find many interesting videos from the world of science and space. Let's go! We begin to get answers to these questions at the end of the 20th century, when our new tools finally allowed us to start finding planets orbiting other stars, exoplanets. And what is most surprising, more than 5,000 exoplanets were discovered by various methods, which we will talk about today. As always, the discoveries gave us answers to many questions. In the early 1990s, which marked a new era in astronomy and cosmology. Almost simultaneously, two new methods appeared that allowed us to find planets outside the solar system. First, astronomers measured the periodic pulses emitted by a neuron star. These impulses regularly accelerated, returned to normal speed, then slowed down, then returned again, and so on constantly. The constant period and aptitude of the changes clearly indicated that these pulses have massive companions. By measuring the timing of these pulses, we were able to find the masses of these companions. They were definitely planets. Then, astronomers noticed periodic shifts of the light of certain stars, either in the red or in the blue part of the spectrum. This also spoke of the presence of massive planets, pulling their stars back and forth with the force of gravity, as a result of which they constantly fluctuated. Such fluctuations can be noticed if the disk of the planet's rotation is parallel to the line of our view of the star. Then, the star periodically moves away or approaches us. With these methods of discovery, the scientists themselves did not see the planets, and they could not measure their characteristics. And yet, for about 15 years, scientists called such planets exosolar. But then, a more convenient term took root, exoplanet. Today, scientists already have five methods that have successfully allowed us both to discover exoplanets and to obtain some information about their properties. Transit time works with the stars that emit regular and periodic signals, such as pulsars. The more regular the signal, the easier it is for us to detect deviations of this signal from arriving to us. It is also necessary that the time for which the planet turns around a particular dead star is less than the time that we observe this star. Radio Velocity A planet and its star revolve around a common center of mass. Not only the planet moves in an elliptical orbit, but also the star. Although the orbit of the latter, of course, is much smaller, and it moves more slowly due to the difference in masses. If the planet is massive enough and close enough to its star, this motion can be detected. Direct observation, the most interesting method because it is the only one that allows you to capture photons that give an image of the exoplanet itself. True, it is also the most difficult. The exoplanet must be large 
bright in terms of reflected light, far enough from its star to be unlit and close enough to Earth to be visible through a telescope. Transit Method The most successful to date Although the first exoplanet with its help was only found in 2004, if it is enough to monitor the amount of light emitted by a star, then with some luck, one of its planets will pass between us and it. As a result of which, a small dip will appear on the glow graph. If this failure is repeated regularly and with the same aptitude, the star has a planet. Works only with large planets that pass the disk of the star often enough and only if its orbit is perfectly aligned on the line connecting us with its star. Microlensing works if, while observing a star, a massive object passes between it and us. The presence of mass warps space, and with it, the path of light coming from the star and planet also bends. This mass works like a lens and does not block the light but amplifies it. It distorts it, allows you to find not only exoplanets orbiting stars, but also free planets of orphan planets. We once believed that the solar system should not be anything special and that all planets fall into a couple of categories. Rocky, like our inner planets, and gas giants, like Jupiter, with subcategories like ice giants into which fall Uranus and Neptune. According to the results of observations of exoplanets, it turned out that most of them have a significant mass and a short period of revolution around the stars, and in size they fall somewhere in the middle between the Earth and Jupiter. 35% of exoplanets are most likely similar to Neptune and 31% of rocky planets larger than Earth, the so-called super-Earths. 30% fall into the category of gas giants and only 4% are more like our Earth. The map of found exoplanets has three strange features. Most of them are scattered across the sky. But there is one cluster of planets that looks like a very bold plus on the map. It's just that the Kelper Space Telescope, which studied one of the spiral arms of our galaxy, focused on this part of the sky. He observed 150,000 stars for three years, and about half of the unknown exoplanets were found here. Other clusters of found exoplanets on the map were formed by the KT and TESS missions. Another cluster of planets is located near the center of the galaxy. They began to be discovered only recently thanks to microlensing. Theoretically, exoplanets should be everywhere. We just find them more often in places that we observe longer and are easier to study. This map is not an illustration of the frequency distribution of exoplanets. It is now believed that almost all star systems should have planets, at least 80% of them. The most difficult question for today is how many planets exist in our galaxy. And it's not even because we don't know exactly how many stars have planets or how many planets each star has. To detect such exoplanets, we either need to drastically improve the technology for direct observation of them or conduct much longer and more careful observations of stars using the transit method and the radial velocity method. So far, it is believed that in the average star system, there are from 4 to 20 planets, but many more questions are connected with planets located outside stellar systems. Most star systems, including our own, must have thrown out a significant number of planets or protoplanets in the process of their formation. In addition, we know practically nothing about how many half-finished star systems exist, how many brown dwarfs, giant planets, ice giants, Earth-like planets, or ice-rich spherical celestial bodies are there in our galaxy. 
Judging by other star systems, giant planets near stars are not only rare, on the contrary, they can be found in abundance. Also, very often we come across many Neptunes. They include most of the planets that we initially incorrectly dubbed Super Earths. In other systems, they are full, but we do not have it all. In addition, there are a couple more significant differences. Our sun is brighter and more massive than 95% of the stars in our galaxy, and about half of all its stars exist in the form of systems of two or more stars. And of course, the most interesting question, are any of these 5,000 exoplanets habitable? We have no answer. Some of them should definitely be rocky and be a suitable distance from their star. And if they have water, then there must be oceans. And on some of these planets, there may be, or could have been, conditions close to ours, to those in which life arose on Earth four billion years ago. It's amazing that we can find planets without even looking at them, and how many of them are twins of the Earth in the habitable zone. Super-Earths are very interesting, but the downside is that until an atmosphere is found on them, and many of them cannot be taken off, this is bad for both hypothetical natives and colonizers. Who knows, maybe the next generation of telescopes will help us figure this out and maybe find traces of life. How do you like this video? Subscribe to my channel if you liked it, and join our community of lovers of science, space, and the unknown, using the links in the description to keep abreast of events. Hugs.